Welcome to the Bible Breakdown. It's a black man and woman in America who no longer identify as believers. This show contains adult languages, themes, and isn't meant for children. As black people, we respect the history of the black church in America, but its current state is massively abusive and we think the Bible might be part of the problem. Listen and let us know what you think. Peace. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown, where we discuss the Bible. We read every single chapter, every word. Um, New Revised Standard Version is what we're on. How are you doing today? Um, I'm I'm Kat. And I'm T. And I'm doing great. Like, I'm literally, like, bursting out of my skin today. Like, that's great. I feel so good. Oh, well, you also look it, so that's good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um... I'm just existing right now. So <laughs> I, don't have I know, much. like you're kind of. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's see if the Bible will cheer you up. Uh, Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out the yada yada yada. Uh, last time we read about a red heifer and some waters, and God t- or the Lord told Moses to kill a bunch of people. Yeah, King Shine, King Og. Did I uh, did Aaron die last time too? I think Aaron and Miriam died. Yeah. Yeah. Miriam's was kind of just a footnote. It was just a like they barely could yeah. be bothered to mention the fact yeah, she had to go. Um, but yeah, and I mean, as violent as things have been, I wouldn't have been surprised if Moses killed her. Because just the way stuff was going, because they, I mean, they had just gotten to a beef not too long ago, mm-hmm. and Moses has been known to murder people to solve his problems. Yeah, that's kind of his MO. Yeah, it's his go-to move. So, but that's why we love him, because he kills people. <laughs> so today, <laughs> we're going to, um, I'm being sarcastic, by the way, I have to say, I really I have to say that now. There's a lot of people who really honestly do not understand sarcasm. Oh, yeah, I know. I didn't learn that until later in life. And it uh, was a struggle maneuvering a lot of relationships because people are a lot more sensitive than you would think they are, uh, at least that I would think they are. And more people than not hang on to your every word. And even those who don't, express it to you i've learned that they will internalize that shit and then just never say it and then years later you figure out they hated you because um it was for some shit that you weren't even being serious about in the first place that felt personal it's very personal that's my life yep all right well let's read numbers 22 or i will yes Balak summons Balaam to curse Israel. The, Israel set the, <clears throat> the Israelites set out and camped in the plains of Moab across the Jordan from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was in great dread of the people because they were so numerous. Moab was to overcome Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel, and Moab said to the elders of Midian, This horde will now lick up all that is around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Now Balak, son of Zippor, was king of Moab at the time. He sent messengers to Balaam, son of Beor, at Pethor, which is on the Euphrates, in the land of Amwa to summon him saying a people has come out of egypt they have spread over the face of the earth and they have settled next to me come now curse this people for me since they are stronger than i perhaps i shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land for i know that whomever you blessed is blessed and whomever you curse is cursed so the elders of moab and the elders of midian departed with the fees for divination in their hand and they came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message he said to them stay here tonight and I will bring back word to you just as the Lord speaks to me so the officials of Moab stayed with Balaam God came to Balaam and said who are these men with you Balaam said to God King Balak son of Zippor of Moab has sent me to this message a people has come out of Egypt and has spread over the face of the earth now come curse them for me perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out 
God said to Balaam, you shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the officials of Balak, go to your own land for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the officials of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Once again, Balak sent officials more numerous and more distinguished than these. They came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, son of Zippor, Do not let anything hinder you from coming to me, for I will surely do you great honor, and whatever you say to me, I will do. Come, curse this people for me. But Balaam replied to the servants of Balak, Although Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do less or more. You remain here as the others did, so that I may learn what more the Lord may say to me. That night God came to Balaam and said to him, If the men have come to summon you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you to do. So Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the officials of Moab. Balaam, the donkey, and the angel. God's anger was kindled because he was going. And the ain't wait, didn't he just tell him to do that? I need a little break, too. That was a lot. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, did I read? Were you, re- were you reading along? Like, did you, did you I see lost that? Track. Like, did, Huh? I mean, I have it here, but I lost track of where you were. Okay, at, so, so it seems like the Lord came to Balaam in a dream, said, "If they, if the men come to summon you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you to do." So Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the officials to Moab. And then it just says God's anger was kindled because he was going, but didn't he just tell him to go with them? Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> God's anger was kindled because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the road as his adversary. Now he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a strong sword in his hand. So the donkey turned off the road and went into the field, and Balaam struck the donkey to turn it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards on a wall on either side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it scraped against the wall and scraped Balaam's foot against the wall so he struck it again then the angel of the word went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was nowhere where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord it lay down under Balaam and Balaam's anger was kindled and he struck the donkey with his staff then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and it said to Balaam what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times Balaam said to the donkey, because you have made a fool of me. I wish I had a sword in my hand. I would kill you right now. (laughs) But the donkey said to Balaam, am I not your donkey? With you have, which you have ridden all your life to this day. Have I been in the habit of treating you this way? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed down, falling on his face. The angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? I have I have come out as an adversary, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away from me, surely just now I would have killed you and let it live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, therefore, if it is displeasing to you, I will return home. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, go with the men, but speak only what I tell you to speak. So Balaam went on with the officials of Balak. When Balak heard that Balaam had come, he went out to meet him at Ir Moab on the boundary formed by the Ammon. At the farthest point of the boundary, Balak said to Balaam, Did I not sin to summon you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? Balaam said to Balak, I have come to you now, but do I have the power to say just anything? The word God puts in my mouth that is what I must say. Then Balaam went to Balak, and they came out to Kiriath Huzoth, 
Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep and sent them to Balaam and to the officials who were with him. On the next day, Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamath Baal, and from there he could see part of the people of Israel. Okay, so if I'm interpreting this story correctly, because Balaam and Balak were confusing me, but Balaam was the one that was on some bullshit. Well, it sounds like he was the one who's like the divinator. Like, I guess he talks to God and can curse and bless people. And so, like, what what stood out to me was that the elders of Moab and Midian departed with fees of divination in they him in their hand when they and they came to Balaam. So that means they pay him to talk to God for them and intercede on their behalf. So he's basically a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> But, or priests of but some he, sort. But who was the one that was asking? Why are we getting he, he was the one that was asking God to curse his enemies so that he could. Um, or was that Balak? I'm trying to go back. Thus says Balak, son of Zippor, do not let Balak's anything. Balak's the king who's worried, who's rightfully worried about his kingdom. Okay, so he asked for it because I just read it. Thus yeah. says Balak, do not let anyone hinder you from coming to me, for I will surely do you great honor. And whatever you do, say to me, I will do come curse the people for me. But Balaam yeah, replied he's to bri- the He's Balaam. bribing Balaam into cursing the Israelites to keep them from doing, because he was like, well, I heard what they did to the Amorites. God damn. Like, I don't want that happening to me. There's so many of them, and they're obviously ready to kill. So, because, I mean, I would think, like, even in these days, people were used to maybe negotiating peace treaties and talking stuff out. But it seems like the Israelites come in pretty hot. Yeah, but if, uh, but then he was leaving out to go to Moab, right? Went to the fishers. Mm -hmm, Because that's where Balaam was. Yeah, but then there was a part in here about you were saying God was angered that he left, but told him to, well, go. to go back with both. Yeah, to go because they were like, hey, come with us because we want, you know, Block wants to talk to you. OK. Um, Once again, a lot of this, this wasn't a well-written story. Like, that's not. why it's hard to follow, because we have a lot of unnecessary details. Um, that's this like entire <laughs> fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> it's um and then i mean we're burying the lead which is you know his donkey he, god can open the mouths of animals apparently or i'm sorry the lord can open the mouths of animals and uh yeah and like i was saying last week i feel like this is where the talking donkey from shrek comes from because all of the characters are taken from a fairy tale and i feel like donkey is you know blom's ass as the story was called when I was reading the King James Version. Oh, well, this definitely feels like a fairy tale, for sure. Um, and why wasn't Balaam more freaked out when the donkey started talking? Happens all the time. And I can't even remember what the lesson of this was in church when they would teach the story. Uh, well, let's look it up. Because I feel well, it's just like listen to God no matter what or he's going to fuck you up. That's probably it. Um, we have this thing called Google. I mean, that's typically the story here. Um, lesson of Balaam. Because it's such a weird way to handle the problem. What are the teaching of Balaam? Because if God didn't want him to go, why didn't you just tell him the night before, like, hey, don't go with them or I'm going to be mad at you? <laughs> He's God's like such a bad girlfriend. And you can go, but just answer my calls when I call you. And it's like, and then you call, she calls, and it's like, I'm so mad at you for going, but it's like, you told me I could go. It's like, you should have known what I meant. Basically. Uh, What was the point of the Balaam <laughs> and the donkey? The king is fearful of Israelites and wants them cursed so he might be able to defeat them. Unfortunately for Balaam, God responds in his dreams with the message that Balaam must not curse the Israelites, for they are blessed. Eventually, he heads out on his faithful donkey with the king's men. Hold on. It's loading. (laughs) This is according to charlotteobserver.com, by the way, Um, because they're so credible. Um, Yeah. Is, uh, is that a paper? Or just yeah, it looks like a paper. I mean, okay. it's written in that style. Oh, they want me to pay to read uh, the rest of it. <laughs> what was the Fuck that noise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, basically, yeah, just li- be a better boyfriend to God. Three important reminders from 
the story of Lama his talking donkey. Um, Wait, what was I watching The Simpsons this week? Every once in a while, it's still, it's still a fun show. I know it isn't like the way it used to be, but it's been on so long. But they were in church and they were singing a parody of the hymn where they're like, praise, 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 okay. praise, praise, praise. And then Lisa's like, God's, or, you know, coming off kind of thirsty in this one. <laughs> to answer your original question, what okay. was the point of the story? So this is the three lessons from Balaam's story. One, God sees your heart, so heed his call. Number two, enticing others to sin will be the death of something. And number three, God is in charge, motherfucker. <laughs> like, that's the entire theme of this Bible. I, I feel book. like that was the big theme. All right. God is in charge, so do what he, do what he says. And, yeah, and like figure that. out what he means. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Even if he says it's like, like a bad again, like a bad relationship where somebody expects you to be a mind reader. Yep. Oh, okay. So moving on to numbers twenty. Wait, where's Moses? Uh, he's chilling right now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This is the part where they tell the sub. What is it? The side stories in the show. Where they what? Where they tell the side stories in the show or the sub stories? Oh, right. The B plot. This is the B, B plot. plot. Yeah, this is B plot stuff. Maybe even C plot. I don't know. I mean, because we're just now getting introduced to this character, so this might be C plot stuff. But anyway, right. in uh, they might have meant. There's been a lot of listing. Maybe they have introduced them already, and we just forgot. Maybe. Well, anyway, in <laughs> in Bible season three, uh, episode twenty three, <laughs> then Balaam said to Balak, "Build me seven altars here, and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me." Balak did as Balaam had said, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. The, then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your burnt offerings while I go inside. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me. Whatever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to bear height. I think I remember this story. And then God met Balaam, and Balaam said to him, I have arranged the seven altars and have offered a bull and a ram on each altar. The Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and this is what you must say. So he returned to Balak, who was standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab. The Balaam, then Balaam uttered his oracle, saying, Balak has brought me for a, a ram. Balak has brought me from a ram. The king of Moab from the eastern mountains, come curse, jo come curse Jacob for me. Come denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God ha has not cursed? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the crags, I see him. From the hills I behold him. Here is, a, here is a people living alone and not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the dust cloud of Israel? Let me die the death of the upright and let me end and let my end be like his. Exclamation mark. Then Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I brought you here. I brought you to curse my enemies, but now you have done nothing but bless them. He answered. Must I not take care to say what the Lord puts into my mouth? <laughs> Balaam's second oracle. So Balak said to him, come with me to another place from which you may see them. You, you shall see only part of them and shall not see and shall not see them all. Then curse them for me from there. So he took him to the field of Zophim, Zophim, Zophim to the top of Pisgah. He built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram of each altar. Balaam said to Balak, stand here beside your burnt offerings while I meet the Lord over there. The Lord met Balaam, put a word in his, into his mouth and said, return to Balak and this is what you shall say. When he came to him, he was standing beside his burnt offerings with the officials of Moab. Balak said to him, what has the Lord said? Then Balaam uttered his oracle saying, rise Balak and hear, listen to me, O son of Zippor. God is not a human being, that he should lie, or mortal, that he should change his mind, but he does all the fucking time. Has he, has he, has he, has he promised and will not, and has he promised and will he not do it? Won't he do it? Oh my God. Has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? See, I received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot revoke it. 
he has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor shall, nor has he seen trouble in Israel. The Lord, their God, is with them, acclaimed as a king among them. God, who brings them out of Egypt, is like the horns of a wild ox for them. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, see what God has done. Look a people rising up like a lioness and rousing itself like a lion. It does not lie down until it has eaten the prey and drunk the blood of the slain. Then Balak said to Balaam, do not curse them at all and do not bless them at all. Balaam answered Balak, did I not tell you whatever the Lord says that is what I must do? So Balak said to Balaam, come now, I may take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of uh, Peor, uh, which overlooks the wasteland. Balaam said to Balak, build me seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. So Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Okay, first of all, if you've been following from like season two, the bible <laughs> you know it takes long as shit to build these fucking altars <laughs> so like <laughs> the fact that he keeps taking him to different i don't know i guess we'll just call them like mountain peaks and he continues that word it was like a real word a bear height a bear height that's what they said and he went to a bear when it's talking about balam he said, perhaps the Lord will come meet me, perhaps. Whatever he shows you, shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a bear height. I just assumed that that was code for, like, they're standing Off by it. himself. Once again, this all has to happen in secret because it's super real. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, they're probably overlooking something from, like, the peak of a mountain or something. I don't fucking know. Well, it, I mean, obviously, this is from a time where people still, like, super believed in magic. Like, because, I mean, they, they're using magic words. They're like, well, there's no divination against Jacob or what do they say? Uh, well, first off, they said there's haven't been any misfortune or trouble in Israel. That's a lie. Um, there were all kinds of troubles. We were reading about it. That's why God had to smite him so many times. So that's not true. So take that oracle. And the fact, too, that they're using oracles, like, isn't that kind of, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, there's no enchantment against it, Jacob, no divination yeah, it against Israel. seems very uh, Lord of the Rings-ish. It does. And the fact, too, that the only way you can talk to God is if you kill an ox. Like, he's going to listen to me super hard. I kill, like, seven yeah, oxes. This <laughs> <laughs> but the, but uh, this is just further proof that I feel like people don't actually sit down and read this shit. They just go. <laughs> They well, they read the little parts like it's out of context because I've heard that's why um, I, I had my mic off. But I shouted out earlier, won't he will when they was doing the little article. What was it? Will he, won't not, he do it? Won't he do it? Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, will he not do it? They just in here like, will he not do again, it? But like I'm in black church. You say, won't he do it? Yeah, They said that shit all the time. Won't he will? And that makes more sense because when you go to church, they tell you to go and we're going to read, you know, mm -hmm. 13 through like. 33 i like the point that you brought up where he's like what is god a human he's not a dude it's like then why are we calling him a guy and then he or a mortal that he should change his mind but god's changed like abraham and moses have been like negotiating with god quite a bit it's almost like he's just their imaginary friend and he can just say whatever yeah, he wants to um it's like hold on god has is telling to him me too, so he must be real because well, Balaam knows how to kill the right animals. But that doesn't... So then he must still... God must still be you real. You know what I think? Like, if this is any way based on a true story, like, we've watched Game of Thrones. That just means somebody already cut a side deal with Balaam and paid him more than what Balak paid him. Maybe. Like Littlefinger? Yeah, like, it's just like when you get the church on your side. It's just like in uh, more modern um, politics and warfare where, like, the Catholic Church would bless certain military campaigns in Europe or whatever. It's ridiculous. They were also super into the slave trade, so. It's very, I don't know, this is all very funny. But anyway, move, uh, plowing ahead. <laughs> Numbers 20, episode 20. Oh, there's another oracle. Yay. Yeah. <clears throat> These are, they are such drama queens. And also, too, God does not talk to chicks, which is, Okay. <laughs> Numbers 24, Balaam's third oracle. Now Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, so he did not go as, 
as at other times to look for omens, but set his face towards the wilderness. Balaam looked up and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and he uttered his oracle, saying, The oracle of Balaam, son of Behor, the oracle of the man whose eye eye is clear the oracle of the one who hears the words of god who sees the visions of the almighty who falls down but with eyes uncovered how fair are your tents o jacob your encampments o israel like palm groves that stretch far away like gardens beside a river like aloes that the lord has planted like cedar trees beside the water water shall flow from his buckets and his seed shall have abundant water his king shall be higher than a gog and his kingdom shall be exalted god who brings him out of egypt is like the horns of a wild ox for him he shall devour the nations that are his foes and break their bones he shall strike with his arrows he crouched he lay down like a lion and like a lioness who will rouse him up blessed is everyone who blesses you and cursed is everyone who curses you then Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. Balak said to Balaam, I summoned you to curse my enemies, but instead you have blessed them these three times. Now be off with you. Go home. I said I will reward you richly, but the Lord has denied you any reward. And Balaam said to Balak, did I not tell you... <laughs> Did I not tell your messengers whom you sent to me, if Balak should give me his house full of silver and gold, I would not be able to go beyond the words of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own will. What the Lord says, that is what I will say. So now I am going to my people. Let me advise you what this people will do to your people in the days to come. Balaam's fourth article. <clears throat> Sorry, Balaam's fourth oracle. So he unfettered his oracle, saying, The oracle of Balan, son of Behor, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, the oracle of the one who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the visions of the Almighty, who falls down but with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Israel, it shall crush the borderlands of Moab and the territory of all the Shethites. Edom will become a possession, sheer a possession of its enemies, while Israel does valiantly. One out of Jacob shall rule and destroy the survivors of Ur. He looked on at Amalek and uttered his oracle, saying, First among the nations was Amalek, but its end is to perish forever. And then he looked on the Kenite and uttered his oracle saying, Enduring is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock, yet Cain is destined for burning. How long shall Asher take you away captive? Again he uttered his oracle saying, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But ships shall come from Kitham and shall afflict Asher and Eber, and he also shall perish forever. Then Balaam got up and went back to his place, and Balak also went his way. So dramatic. It was. It was very dramatic. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like <clears throat> Balak is pissed that, you know, this fucking guy is not old enough. <laughs> I asked you to do something. You're not fucking doing it. In Balaam's defense, though, he did say, look, man, I'm not. I've been told you. I've been told you I wasn't going to do that. It's like when you go over a girl's house and she says, we're not going to have sex. And then you're <laughs> going to have sex with her. And, and then she doesn't give you sex. And you get mad because she's not giving you sex. And then she said, I told you we weren't having sex. But there was that one time where you said we weren't going to have sex. And then we did end yeah. up having sex. And so I thought this might have been like that time. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what this situation is. <laughs> Oh, gosh, what a mess. Um, I don't know. I guess it is kind of one of those things, too, because he's trying to say, you know, anybody who uh, curses Israel will be cursed. So 
Um, Looks like Bullock's days are numbered. Yeah. Um, this fourth article, I did, honestly didn't understand a lot of it. He was naming people I didn't know and places I didn't know. But it, it was basically just sort of like, um, it just sounds like a general sort of, the you know, streets will run red with the blood of my enemies kind of thing. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, takeaways from all of this. Donkeys can talk and don't fuck with the Lord. Donkeys can talk and don't fuck with the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I and I mean, at least we didn't have to talk about lampstands, and then um, that was way more entertaining. Yeah, and they weren't yeah. listing the same amount of like rams and silver bowls over and over again. Yeah, we got a story this time. Mm-hmm. Got it. And um, like I said, I'm kind of into it. It's just I can't see. Um, I can't really cheer for Israel. Um, once again, it's such a lame miracle. Like, I know this is considered one of the miracles of the Bible with, like, God sending an angel to stop Balaam and his donkey. But, like, what a stupid solution to that problem. Like, why not, for one, just settle some land for Israel where they don't have to kill a bunch of people who've already settled it first? That'd be too easy. Actually, it would be more difficult because then Israel would have to do the infrastructure. Like, this is classic art of war stuff where it's like, okay, like... You want to, like, kill off, you know, not that you want to do it so that you still have that. You don't want to destroy it so much that there's no infrastructure. You want to go in with, you know, something you can work with. I don't know. Each time we do these, I just constantly am amazed how people can still believe in this book to the degree that they do. Or claim to. Because once again, no, I don't think anybody's really reading this all that much. I think it's just a you know user agreement that everyone signed without reading. Pretty much. Because they want to, it's like, just give me the good stuff. I want to live forever. Pretty much. But I don't know. I've gotten to the point now, too, in like, just because I went to a wedding over the weekend. And uh, luckily, you know, I was around all black churchy people, people who believe in God. But um, I luckily wasn't overbearing. But I was, um, it just made me just think, like, I was aware of certain conversations I could and couldn't have in this space, um, because it was, it really doesn't serve any purpose, and I kind of just got to that point in my life where I don't even want to have these conversations with people. Well, you don't want to be a rude guest. I don't want to be a rude guest. Um, but I also don't want to, like, duck like if somebody starts asking me, because I've had people flat out ask me, like, "Are you a believer?" Wow. You know, so they, <laughs> that didn't happen this weekend. But oh, good. good I'm just good. saying, like, I am kind of at a place where I don't know what you to know say. What a good, I, I need to. I would. I. I think I know what you should say. What? We're gonna do a little role playing. So you be the. Well, Christian. I know what I always say. No, we're gonna do. Yeah. A, we're gonna come on improv. Okay, so in this scene, you're um, a zealous new Christian who's going to ask me if I'm a believer. Or no, let's just say you're an established Christian, whatever. And you're going to ask me if I'm a believer. Okay, go. Are you a believer? Why is that important to you to know that about me? (laughs) I mean, you're asking the wrong person to do this. Because my (laughs) real answer is because I want to make sure you're on my side. I want to make sure you're on my side and you, you are a reflection of everything I want to see in the world. Wow. (laughs) That's the real answer. Like that's the the cycle analyzed answer. That's not what they would say, but that's the answer. I know, but I'm like, I was like, okay, so what's your number? (laughs) If somebody said that, you would say. That was like, that was incredibly like, wow. That was that was actually like flattering. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm (laughs) going from there. All right. Let's There's still a Christian though. No, it doesn't matter. But that was like a per- that was a beautiful way of saying it. But that is th- th- what I've learned sure, about. Sure, you want you want me I've on your team. About people but I'm like, like what is your? But I was gonna go deeper into it's like, why should I want to be on your team? Oh, okay. Um, because Jesus is the way, and I just want to make sure that I'm doing my due diligence by the Bible by influencing as many people's lives as possible so that we can all enjoy the riches and grace of heaven i don't think i want to go to heaven why would you not want to go there that's like saying if i showed you a way to a um 
nice vacation in the Bahamas. And would but you if you trapped me there and said I could never leave, I don't think I'd want to go. Because you can't leave heaven, right? Nobody said that you can't. Oh, that's interesting. This afterlife thing was always very confusing to me. So when you said Jesus is the way and the only way, why is that? Well, I would just argue this. How about you live your life thinking, you know, maybe you should do this because it's better to go through life figuring out. Just one foot on base. Do it one foot on base. It's better to go through <laughs> life saying that just you so believe that God this. Won't burn so me then forever. if you get to the end of your life and find out, then uh, it was true. Yeah. You won't be. Isn't that kind of insincere, though? Like, would God, like, would that really trick God? Like, just sliding in, like, under, you know, like, God like said, technicalities? God said, as long as that you believe in Him at the end of your life, that you will go to heaven. So, like, does that mean, like, Hitler will be there and, like, all those priests who raped those kids? If Hitler gave his life over to God, yeah, Hitler then was God Christian. will show him his mercy. That's one of the reasons he hated God, the Jews. I sound like one of those fucking people. I know this is interesting, though, because it's like, <laughs> yeah, like, that's the reason why Hitler was so motivated. He really hated Jews for, well, you I know, know, basically starting his, you know, what he's calling his faith. <laughs> There are so many people I would love to get on this pod, but I just feel like it would go. I know they're they don't, they're not ready. They're not ready for what. There's we bring. few like there's maybe one person I know. Well, back at the time, <laughs> I feel like I don't know. Maybe he's way more indoctrinated now. But we had a very um, great conversation one time because I just he was super into church and I just asked him a whole bunch of questions and I didn't like you know I took the gloves off and I was like. Saying, you know, this kind of makes God seem like a bitch doing <laughs> some of this stuff. And then he was just like. At least a little insecure. Yeah. And he was just, um, I mean, I wouldn't say that now, but he he was just like explaining his come to's about all of this. And I was like, OK, I can get that again. If you want to believe in Christian God, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is like not people being open-minded or not being able to be like yeah you know like i had a conversation with my roommate i might have brought this up before but they just basically i know i brought this up to you but i this is like one of the smartest people i know hands down probably one of the most intellectual deep thinker people that i know and a fucking badass in all ways like they're doing a lot of shit even with them potentially dying but that's neither here nor there. But I just asked him, like, you know, generally, like, smart people don't believe in God. At least that's the way it's perceived. And they were just like, you know, I've been asked that question, and I just don't believe that it, because the universe is so seems to be so accurate and so, or at least, like, in the terms that we understand, it seems to be so accurate, everything's so fine-tuned that for them that means that there has to be a – equation of god and i was like you know i can understand that answer i can understand that perspective that's not evidence it cares about us though like nothing about the universe well we didn't go into that part to be fair (laughs) so that was a layer that i did not peel back but from (laughs) that standpoint like i can understand that like i mean but that's why i can't because i'm like also this person doesn't like sit around like i mean i'm sure they pray but i don't i've never seen them do it so sure i mean it just seems like if there is like a god of the universe like it doesn't seem super concerned with people like that's yeah. just something i think we do to make ourselves feel better but like there's a lot of life on this planet and i mean it's it doesn't really seem like there's a benevolent creator involved like most of the universe we can't even go to because it would kill us so like it I don't know. Maybe we're already like, on heaven because we are kind of trapped on I earth. I think we do make our own heaven and hell. Like, I don't, there was a, I don't know who said it, but it was this quote about how there's no hell worse than a life poorly lived. So mm-hmm. that always stuck with me because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not blowing this. Like, I don't know. There was no pre-life, so I don't think there's an I afterlife. Think of some things worse than a life poorly lived. Huh? I can think of a few things worse. Like getting on a treadmill and running for two hours sucks. That's hell. Anyway, thanks for joining well, us on Bible I'll, Breakdown. Okay. I'm just being <laughs> like that. I can think of some things that are worse, but. I, 
when I think of a life poorly lived, I think of like a life of like deception and addiction and stuff like that. I think that's worse than just doing but a couple hours on the treadmill. But if it felt good at the time, and is actually, it poorly no, lived? It's, it's poorly was, lived to you. You know what? Um, no, the, answer the treadmill, my question. No, no, no. The treadmill did start as a torture device. <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah, like that, it, that was, I actually learned that yesterday. That was super fun. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yes, it's unpleasant, but it's not like your life is bad this is something for two uh, for however long but you you're get on choosing that. to do it though okay people so choose to do choose people to. choose to My do the, what like you just said being addiction forced to run, being forced to run on a treadmill for two hours yes but like if you're choosing to run on a treadmill for two hours like your life's going pretty good so I mean, i'm choosing to go to time. hell in that moment no it's not once again the concept of hell is so weird anyway there's no real description of it even in the bible like the closest thing is a lake of fire but like if you don't have a body anymore how is fire hurting you you know like we experience pain through a very complex bio bio neuro you know process but i would be i would argue that because we don't have the understanding of the universe and how things work that when we die if our if we're going to go with the concept of our spirit or consciousness or whatever transcends. It's all part of our biology, though. They don't know that for fact. I mean, you don't get a consciousness without a biology. Like, we're not. Fair, getting... but you don't know that for fact. Like, nobody knows I mean, that. That's why I just I, take the stance. We kind of do, though. No, there's literally. We don't, been, have, any, we don't have any evidence there, of anything outside of physical consciousness. Okay, fair, but we also don't have evidence that there's not. We don't have evidence that, but you can't, that's not how you, that's not how epistemology works. Like, you don't need evidence of something not existing. Like, this is this idea of, like, is there a teapot orbiting the moon? We don't know. There's no evidence saying there isn't. Yes, we like, do, because we have a fucking satellite that can Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can, or let's just say it was, like, there's a giant teapot somewhere in the universe. Like, you can't prove or disprove that. But it's, like, there's not really any reason to think that's true, though. So like there's no like it's just a non-starter like if there's okay like there's no evidence against it but there's not that's not how you prove something's real by saying there's no evidence against it because you can make up yeah, anything like there's a giant spaghetti monster. I wouldn't monster. go so far as to be like I'm an atheist. I'm. I, I didn't, we didn't even we jumped to that like. But no, I'm, but the, I think that's the overarching. I'm not saying, but that's okay. the thing too. Like I'm just saying that it's not a benevolent God. Like I'm not saying there's no God. I or agree with you on that but, part. I'm just arguing other perspectives as well because i feel like i feel like what fucks people up is they want to be certain and so they go to either i do believe in god or I absolutely don't believe in god like nobody's comfortable in my experience just being like yeah i don't know but that's fine like i'll just figure it out so or let's say because we're talking about like because I, I feel like we're always just talking about the biblical god when people say god at least in the i English mean speaking every world. single fucking god exactly so like but i'm not losing any sleep thinking vishnu might not be real or <laughs> like to me it's pretty obviously that's something they made up at the time and now people don't i mean they some people might still fuck with it but not really let's say like zeus they just made that shit up and now nobody believes it anymore. So like it's done. I feel like it's the same way with Bible God. Like they just made that shit up and at some point I we're not gonna believe it the anymore. Same. So like the idea that this, you know, God has to be this person who cares like I don't, he's putting I'm not, us in person. I'm not saying that though. That's well, not and the I argument think we were I'm going making. into like the consciousness isn't tied to your biology I, or you being physically alive. Like once you're not physically alive, you don't have consciousness anymore. Like that's it. But also says spirit. Like you don't know. That's the like thing. If like it that's tied to your consciousness. Like it. Those you aren't two independent things. Don't know if things. it transcends to another space because then there's also like, what is that's what just is hold on? What is the to theory where themselves. it's like you just, you um, just fucking no die. energy can be created or destroyed or something? Yeah, matter. Okay, well, that's what yeah. we are though. But no, you stop being that and become something else. Okay, but but that's not your consciousness anymore. Like your consciousness was tied to your brain. Your brain is now meat that's rotting in the ground. So no, like you are I, gone, and you're giving yourself back to the earth so you can like come back. You know, like part I, of you, but my that's not to you. That is they have not scientifically proven that. They know that like you're alive. Well, how would you go about proving that? I don't know. Uh, maybe we're not as advanced. Like, but there's the still theories that, like, out that's there that there are fucking uh, proven, time that, machines and shit I, that can be built. I think built. that's just a mythology that we've made to make ourselves feel better. No, like, I'm not. I don't need to feel better because I personally feel like when you die, you just fucking die. 
and like that's morbid and bleak for a lot it's of people. Not, I mean, actually, for a lot you're of people, maybe not you, but for a lot of people. But to argue the other perspective, I also just don't know, and so therefore, I'm okay with just being like, I don't Once know. Again, did you have a pre-life? You don't know. That's my, but that's exactly it. Like, like you could die and then fucking like wake up in some uh exiting the matrix type shit like you don't know sure sure but to me the the i don't know to me it's just like not even is it improbable probably but like i don't i don't know man like i feel like we don't know enough about the universe to fully like a hundred percent make that assessment we could probably 99 percent do it but i don't think a hundred percent we can say that because we don't know enough about the universe. I mean, so that, I mean, but at that same way, like, we're all just operating on probabilities. Like, nothing's certain. Like, to me, that's just not, it's so improbable, it's not even worth entertaining. Like, a giant teapot being in space. Okay. I, I mean, I'm not necessarily choosing to entertain it, per se. I'm just ar- saying that. But we don't know for sure. Like, it could be out there. We can't prove it or disprove it at this point. Right. Okay. Because we don't know everything in the universe, so it could be out there. Yeah, and that like that's the concept. I but just like I wish said, like it's not would... worth thinking about though. So that's the same thing to me. It's like I mean, is it I'm... not though? I mean, I feel like it's good to think about these things because like, like Prometheus, like you kind of want to know the movie, not the story. Although, it's really yeah, they're all both me. stories, but yeah. But anyway, but wasn't the point of that like God hates us and that was not the point. It was just like. That's what I got Meeting your it. creator and is, didn't probably, kill them? is probably not going to be as fascinating as you think it would. Didn't they kill, like, the engineers, yeah. like, kill them? Yeah, they hate us. Like, yeah, God hates us. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Remember, your body belongs to you. Check us out on uh, BibleBreakdown.com. Uh, oh, wait, we, we didn't do what's next, what's coming up next. Yeah, exactly. Prometheus was good, though. It is. I like that movie. Next time on Bible Breakdown, we will be uh, doing 25 through 26. Oh, they start worshiping Baal. I bet God's going to yeah, fuck them worship up. Worship of uh, Baal of Peor. Oh, there's a census of a new generation. We get to list a lot of names again. Yeah. Ooh, daughters of... Z- oh, so we get to know about some girls. That'll be good. Yeah. Ooh, and we'll get to meet Joshua. Or we've met Joshua because he was in the yep, scouting story. But now we're gonna, he's going to officially... So. Yeah, he's going to officially... Looks like so Moses is on his way out. <laughs> Season he's three, he's episode twenty-seven. Will he survive? Now, I, like once again, now that I'm an adult reading this, like it, you know, Joshua probably killed Moses. That's how people take power. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> so it's a cold world out there. It is because that way you know when to strike. Like a lot of this stuff is just about how people acquire power by keeping the masses frightened. <laughs> anyway, it works. <laughs> if you believe in God or if you don't. My whole argument has always been, hey, man, just do what you want. Just do. If there's a God, he definitely hates just, you. I'm not going to say that. Just <laughs> do, you know, what you do the right thing. And you know what the right thing is. There is a morality thing. Don't hurt other people yeah. intentionally. That's all I ever ask. That's yeah, all there's I ever moral ask. and ethics. We just don't get them from the Bible, thank God, or else we'd still be enslaving and killing each other all the time. <laughs> Have a good week, people. Bye.